Marcus, your defense is seventh in the country in points allowed, despite facing five teams that averaged more than 30 points a game. What stands out about this defense in comparison to some of the other great ones you've coached? Well, I think this group is one, the, the leaders on this group have been tremendous. And I think it all starts with your senior leadership. I think we got a, a, a veteran group that understands the expectations. They understand, understand the culture and the things that we're trying to do. And, you know, when you have great leadership, man, it's, 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 it's a lot of fun to coach. And the results usually are uh, pretty productive. And, and they've done a great job. Your defense is not a one-size-fits-all kind of defense where you do the same thing every game. You're constantly tweaking your schematics and your personnel based on the opponent. Can you describe your philosophy where that is concerned? Well, I think each week what you want to do is you want to kind of tailor your defense to take away what the offense does best. And I think every week we look at it and we game plan and we say, hey, what are the things that this offense wants to do? And how can we attack that? And how can we make sure we make the teams go to their plan B and plan C? And uh, that might mean putting 3D linemen on the field. That might mean putting four, playing zone, playing man, putting different guys in different places. But we have a core foundation. Um, we have a, a scheme where everybody understands stands and where they go and how they fit. We just like to sometimes disguise how we get there or who's in the game or who's fitting where. But I think the understanding is that if, as long as the guys understand exactly the big picture, you know, they understand the big picture of what we're trying to accomplish, I think you can do some different things pre-snap wise. You and Coach Fickle have a very close relationship going back many years. And as legend has it, he tried to talk you out of getting into the coaching profession. Is that true? Very true, 100 percent true. And uh, he was the first call I made when I thought about getting into the profession. And um, I'll never forget, man, he said, OK, if you really want to do this, be at my office at 6 a.m. tomorrow morning. And this was on a Tuesday. And I remember going in and first thing he said was, you don't want to do this. You really don't want to do this. You know, there's many different things you can do. You GA for Gene Smith. And how about looking, going into athletic directing and and, and maybe that path and and after a long conversation and I said, let me at least think about it, coach. I said, no, nah, you can't talk me out of it. This is what I want to do. And he said at that moment, that's when he knew that, okay, let's do it. You know, and, and I understand now, now that I've been in profession, you understand um, there are some sacrifices you have to make to be a coach and mostly for your family. At that time, I had a wife and one son and, and um, I think anybody getting to the profession must understand, man, this is a very, very, at times, selfish profession. You spend a lot of time away from your family, and you just got to make sure this people understand what they're getting. It isn't just Saturdays. It isn't game days on TV. It's a lot of long hours. But um, for me, it, it, to me, the impact you make on young people overrides all that. You know, and my family's been uh, so gracious and understanding that, hey, there's going to be sacrifices made in the Freeman household. But for me, I'm so satisfied when you get to see the impact. Um, you get to see young people grow, and that's what wakes me up every day, and that's why I continue to do it.